Hare Krishna, <clears throat> my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, right here in the live studios of The Haven, which is located in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. We're sitting here with Abhay Das Brahmachari and also Gohari Das Brahmachari, who just arrived from Houston. We welcome him warmly, affectionately, and thank him very much for agreeing to come and give Abhay a break and uh, help us uh, maintain this little uh, ashram we have here and develop it. <clears throat> Warm welcome to all of you out there in cyberspace. We hope you're safe and well and happy as can be in these troubled times the world's going through. But this hearing of the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is the solution, both individually and collectively for the whole world. It may take some time for the world to wake up to this fact, but eventually it will, because that is the will of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the intense desire of Srila Prabhupada that everyone in the world can become happy. By associating with Krishna, we become really happy, uh, not temporarily happy. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is literary incarnation of Krishna. Sanatha Goswami compiled this Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram to teach us just that. It goes like this Sarva Shastrabdi Pi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja, Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kali Dvandudita Ditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees O Master Srimad Bhagavatam You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by Everyone, you are Sri Krishna Himself. Mareka bando matsangin, madguro man mahadana, man nistaraga mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu ta dayin ati ni chochata kada hanamunchagada chin mam prim narit kanta yukspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we've reached the 27th chapter of the 4th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and our allegorical hero, Puranjana, representing the soul, uh, 
has passed his life in sense gratification materialistically and now he's going to get the final lesson. We're starting with text 6. The great sage Narada then addressed King Prachina Barisha. O one whose lifespan is great, Virat, in this way, King Puranjana begot 1,100 sons within the womb of his wife, Puranjani. However, in this business, he passed away half of his lifespan. Purport In this verse, there are several significant words. The first of which are Ekadasha Shatani. Puranjana had begotten 1,100 sons within the womb of his wife and thus passed away half of his life. Actually, every man follows a similar process. If one lives for 100 years, at the utmost, in his family life, he simply begets children up to the age of 50. Unfortunately, at the present moment, people do not live even a hundred years. Nonetheless, they beget children up to the age of 60. Another point is that formerly, people used to beget 100 to 200 sons and daughters, as will be evident from the next verse. King Puranjana not only begot 1,100 sons, but also 110 daughters. At the present moment, no one can produce such huge quantities of children. Instead, mankind is very busy checking the increase of population by contraceptive methods. We do not find in Vedic literatures that they ever used contraceptive methods, although they were getting begetting hundreds of children. Checking population by contraceptive method is another sinful activity. But in this age of Kali, people have become so sinful that they do not care for the resultant reactions of their sinful lives. King Puranjana lay down with his wife, Puranjani, and begot a large number of children. And there is no mention in these verses that he used contraceptive methods. According to the Vedic scriptures, the contraceptive method should be restraint in sex life. It is not that one should indulge in unrestricted sex life and avoid children by using some method to, to check pregnancy. If a man is in good consciousness, he consults with his religious wife, and as a result of this consultation with intelligence, one advances in his ability to estimate the value of life. In other words, if one is fortunate enough to have a good conscientious wife, he can decide by mutual consultation that human life is meant for advancing in Krishna consciousness and not for begetting a large number of children. Children are called parinama or byproducts. And when one consults his good intelligence, he can see that his byproduct should be the expansion of his Krishna consciousness. Text 7 O Prajapati, King Prachinavarishad, in this way King Puranjana also begot 110 daughters. All of these were equally glorified like the father and mother. Their, their behavior was gentle and they possessed magnanimity and other good qualities. Purport Children begotten under the rules and regulations of the scriptures generally become as good as the father and mother. But children born illegitimately mainly become Varna Sankara. The Varna Sankara population is irresponsible to the family, community, and even to themselves. Formerly, the Varna Sankara population was checked 
by the observation of the reformatory method called Karmadana Sangskara, a child begetting religious ceremony. In this verse we find that although King Paranjana had begotten so many children, they were not Varna Sankara. <clears throat> All of them were good, well-behaved children, and they had good qualities like their father and mother. <clears throat> even, though we may, even though we may produce many good children, our desire for sex that is beyond the prescribed method is to be considered sinful. Too much enjoyment of any of the senses, not only sex, results in sinful activities. Therefore, one has to become a Swami or Goswami at the end of his life. One may beget children up to the age of 50, but after 50, one must stop begetting children and one should accept the Vanaprastha order. In this way, he must leave home and then become a sannyasi. A sannyasi's title is Swami or Goswami, which means that he completely refrains from sense enjoyment. One should not accept the sannyas order whimsically. He must be fully confident. He must be fully confident that he can restrain his desires for sense gratification. King Paranjana's family life was, of course, very happy. As mentioned in these verses, he begot 1,100 sons and 110 daughters. Everyone desires to have more sons than daughters, and since the number of daughters was less than the number of sons, it appears that King Paranjana's family life was very comfortable and pleasing. Text 8 After this, King Paranjana, king of the Panchala country, in order to increase the descendants of his paternal family, married his sons with qualified wives and married his daughters with qualified husbands. Purport According to the Vedic system, everyone should marry. One has to accept a wife because a wife will produce children and the children in turn will, will offer foodstuffs and funeral ceremonies so that, the, so that the forefathers, wherever they may live, will be made happy. The offering of oblations in the name of Lord Vishnu is called Pindoka, Pindotaka. And it is necessary that the descendants of a family offer Pinda to the forefathers. Not only was Puranjana, the king of Panchala, satisfied in his own sex life, but he arranged for the sex life of his 1,100 sons and 110 daughters. In this way, one can elevate an aristocratic family to the platform of a dynasty. It is significant in this verse that Puranjana got both sons and daughters married. It is the duty of a father and mother to arrange for the marriage of their sons and daughters. That is the obligation in Vedic society. Sons and daughters should not be allowed freedom to intermingle with the opposite sex unless they are married. This Vedic social organization is very good in that it stops <clears throat> the promulgation of illicit sex life or Varna Sankara, which appears under different names in this present day. Unfortunately, in this age, although the father and mother are anxious to get their children married, the children refuse to get married by the arrangement of the parents. Consequently, the number of Varna Sankara has increased throughout the world under different names. Text 9 Of these many sons, each produced hundreds and hundreds of grandsons. In this way, the whole city of Panchala became, became overcrowded by these sons and grandsons of King Paranjana. Purport 
we must remember that Puranjana is the living entity and the city Panchala is the body. The body is the field of activity for the living entity. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Chetra, Chetra Gya. There are two constituents. One is the living entity, Chetra Gya, and the other is the body of the living entity, Chetra. Any living entity can know that he is covered by the body if he only contemplates the body a little bit. Just with a little contemplation, he can come to understand that the body is his possession. One can understand that this by practical experience and by the authority of the Shastras. In Bhagavad Gita 2.13, it is said, Dehi no smin yata dehe. The proprietor of the body, the soul, is within the body. The body is taken as the panchala desh, or the field of activities, wherein the living entity can enjoy the senses in their relationship to the five sense objects, namely ganda, rasa, rupa, sparsha, and shabda. That is, sense objects made out of earth, water, fire, air, and sky. Within this material world, covered by the material body of subtle and gross matter, every living entity creates actions and reactions, which are herein known allegorically as sons and grandsons. There are two kinds of actions and reactions, namely pious and impious. In this way, our material existence becomes coded by different actions and reactions. In this regard, Srila Naratam Das Thakur states, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, Kevala Vishera Bandha, Amrita Baliya Yeba Kai, Nana Yoni Sada Pire, Kandarya Bhakshana Kare, Tara Janma Adak Pate Yai. Fruitive activities and mental speculation are simply cups of poison. Whoever drinks of them, thinking, thinking them to be nectar, must struggle very hard, life after life, in different types of bodies. Such a person eats all kinds of nonsense and becomes condemned by his activities of so-called sense enjoyment. Thus, the field of action and reactions by which one's descendants are increased begins with sex life. Puranjana increased his whole family by begetting sons who in their turn begot grandsons. Thus the living entity, being inclined toward sexual gratification, becomes involved in many hundreds and thousands of actions and reactions. In this way he remains within the material world simply for the purpose of sense gratification and transmigrates from one body to another. His, his process of re reproducing so many sons and grandsons results in so-called societies, nations, communities, and so on. All these communities, societies, dynasties, and nations simply expand from sex life. As stated by Prahlad Maharaj, Yan maitur nadi griha medi sukham ituch cham Bhagavatam 7, 9, 45 A griha medi is one who wants to remain within this material existence. This means that he wants to remain within this body or society and enjoy friendship, love and community. His only enjoyment is in increasing the number of sex enjoyers. <laughs> he enjoys sex and produces children who in their turn marry and produce grandchildren. The grandchildren also marry and in their turn produce great-grandchildren. In this way the entire earth becomes overpopulated and then suddenly there are reactions 
provoked by material nature in the form of war, famine, pestilence, and earthquakes, and so on. Thus, the, the entire population is again extinguished simply to be recreated. This process is explained in Bhagavad Gita 8.19 as repeated creation and annihilation. Bhutva, Bhutva, Praliyate. Due to a lack of Krishna consciousness, all this creation and annihilation is going on under the name of human civilization. This cycle continues due to man's lack of knowledge of the soul and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 10 These sons and grandsons were virtually plunderers of King Puranjana's riches, including his home, treasury, servants, secretaries, and all other paraphernalia. Puranjana's attachment for these things was very deep-rooted. Purport In this verse, the word Rikta Hareshu, meaning plunderers of wealth, is very significant. One's sons, grandsons, and other descendants are ultimately plunderers of one's accumulated wealth. There are many celebrated businessmen and industrialists who produce great wealth and are highly praised by the public, but all their money is ultimately plundered by their sons and grandsons. In India, we have actually seen one industrialist who, like King Puranjana, was very much sexually inclined and had half dozen wives. Each of these wives had a separate establishment that necessitated the expenditure of several thousands of rupees. When I was engaged in talking with him, I saw that he was very busy trying to secure money so that all his sons and daughters would get at least 500,000 rupees each. Thus, such industrialists, businessmen and karmis, or karmis, are called mudhas in the shastras. They work very hard, accumulate money, and are satisfied to see that this money is plundered by their sons and grandsons. Such people do not want to return their wealth to its actual owner. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 529, Bhoktaram, Yagya Tapasam, Sarvaloka Maheshwaram. <clears throat> the real proprietor of all wealth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the, he is the actual enjoyer. So called earners of money are those who simply know tricks by which they can take away God's money under the guise of business and industry. After accumulating this money, they enjoy seeing it plundered by their sons and grandsons. This is the materialistic way of life. In materialistic life, one is engaged within the body and deluded by false egoism. Thus one thinks, I am this body. I am a human being. I am an American. I am an Indian. This bodily conception is due to false ego. Being deluded by false ego, one identifies himself with a certain family, nation, or community. In this way, one's life, one's attachment for the material world grows deeper and deeper. Thus it becomes very difficult for the living entity, entity to extricate himself from his entanglement. Such people are graphically described in the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, 16, 13 and 15, through 15, in this way. Idam adya maya labdam imam prapsye manoratam idam astidam apime bevishyati punardanam asau maya atak shatrur Hanyishe chaparamapi Ishwaro hamahambogi 
Siddho ham balavan sukhi Hanjo bijanavan asmi Konyosti sedrisho maya Yakshe dasyam mi modisha Modisha hityagyana mimohitaha The demoniac person thinks so much wealth do I have today and I will, and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much, my, so much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemy will also be killed. I am the Lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful and happy. I am the richest man, surrounded by aristocratic relatives. <clears throat> there is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity. And thus, I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. In this way, people <clears throat> engage in various laborious activities and their attachment for body, home, family, nation, and community becomes more and more deep-rooted. Text 11 The great sage Narda continued, My dear King Prachinabharishat, like you, King Paranjana also became implicated in so many desires. Thus, he worshipped demigods, forefathers, and social leaders with various sacrifices, which, which were all very ghastly because they were inspired by the desire to kill animals. Purport In this verse, the great sage Narada discloses that the character of Puranjana was being described to give lessons to King Prachinabharisha. Actually, the entire description was figurat figuratively describing the activities of King Prachinabharisha. In this verse, Narda frankly says, like you, yata bhavan, which indicates that King Puranjana is none other than King Prachinabharisha himself. Being a great Vaishnava, Narada Muni wanted to stop animal killing and sacrifices. He knew that if he tried to stop the king from performing sacrifices, the king would not hear him. Therefore, he is, he is describing the life of Puranjana. But in this verse, he first discloses the, the intention, although not fully, by saying, like you, Generally, the karmis who are attached to increasing descendants have to perform so many sacrifices and worship so many demigods for future generations and satisfy, satisfy so many leaders, politicians, philosophers, and scientists to make things go on properly for future generations. The so-called scientists are very eager to see that future generations will live very comfortably and as such they are trying to find different means of generating energy to drive locomotives, cars, airplanes and so on. Now they are exhausting the petroleum supply. These activities are described in the Bhagavad Gita 2.41 Vyabhasayatmika Budhir Ekeha Kurunandana Bahu shaka yanantascha buddhayo vyabhasayinam Those who are on the spiritual path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many-branched. Actually, those who are in knowledge of everything are determined to execute Krishna consciousness. 
but those who are rascals, mudha, sinners, duskritina, and the lowest of mankind, naradama, who are bereft of all intelligence, mayaya, parita, jnana, and those who take and, and who take shelter of the demoniac way of life, asuram, bhavam, ashritaham, are disinterested in Krishna consciousness. As such, they become implicated and take on so many activities. Most of these activities center around the killing of animals. Modern civilization is centered around animal killing. Karmis are advertising that without eating meat, their vitamin value or vitality will be reduced. So to keep oneself fit, to work hard, one must eat meat. And to digest meat, one must drink liquor. And to keep the balance of drinking wine and eating meat, one must have sufficient sexual intercourse to keep fit, to work very hard like an ass. <laughs> there are two ways of animal killing. One way is in the name of religious activities. All the religions of the world, except the Buddhists, have a program for killing animals in places of worship. According to Vedic civilization, the animal eaters are recommended to sacrifice a goat in the temple of Kali under certain restrictive rules and regulations and eat the flesh. Similarly, they are recommended to drink wine by worshipping the goddess Chandika. The purpose is restriction. People have given up all this restriction. Now they are regularly opening wine distilleries and slaughterhouses and indulging in drinking alcohol and eating flesh. A Vaishnava Acharya like Narada Muni knows very well that persons engaged in such animal killing in the name of religion are certainly becoming involved in the cycle of birth and death, forgetting the real aim of life, to go home, back to Godhead. Thus the great sage Narada, while instructing Srimad Bhagavatam to Vyasa Muni, condemned the Karmakanda, fruitive activities mentioned in the Vedas. Narada told Vyas, Jagupshitam Dharmakrite Nushashata Subhava Raktasya Mahan Vyatikramaha Yad Vakya Yog Dharma Itatarat Stito Yad Vakyato Dharma Iti Tarak Stito Namanyate Tasya Nivarnanam Janaha The people in general are naturally inclined to enjoy, and you have encouraged them in that way in the name of religion. This is barely condemned and quite unreasonable because they are guided. <clears throat> Under your instructions, they will accept such activities in the name of religion and will hardly care for prohibitions. Bhagavatam 1.5.15 Srila Narada Muni chastised Vyasadeva for compiling so many Vedic supplementary scriptures which are all intended for guiding the people in general. Narada Muni condemned these scriptures because they do not mention direct devotional service. Under Narada's instructions, direct worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam was set forth by Vyasadeva. The conclusion is that neither the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, nor his devotee ever sanctions animal killing in the name of religion. Indeed, Krishna incarnated himself as Lord Buddha to put an end to animal killing in the name of religion. <clears throat> animal sacrifice under the name of religion is conducted by the influence of tamoguna, the mode of ignorance, as indicated in the 18th chapter 
of Bhagavad Gita, 1831 and 32. Yaya dharma madharmam cha, karyam cha karyam eva cha, ayatabat prajanati bhuti sa partarajasi. A dharma dharma itiya manyate tamasavrita sarvartan vipadi tangscha bhuti sa partatamasi. That understanding <clears throat> which cannot distinguish between the religious way of life and the irreligious, between action that should be done and action that should not be done, that imperfect understanding, O son of Prita, is in the mode of passion. That understanding which considers irreligion to be religion and religion to be irreligion under the spell of illusion and darkness and strives always in the wrong direction, O Partha, is in the mode of ignorance. Those who are involved in the mode of ignorance manufacture religious systems for killing animals. Actually, dharma is transcendental. As Lord Sri Krishna teaches, we must give up all other systems of religion and simply surrender unto Him, Sarva Dharman Puritya Thus the Lord and His devotees and representatives teach the transcendental dharma, which does not allow animal killing at all. At the present moment, it is the greatest misfortune that in India, many so-called missionary workers are spreading irreligion in the name of religion. They claim an ordinary human being to be God and recommend meat-eating for everyone, including so-called sannyasis. Text 12 Thus King Paranjana, being attached to fruitive activities, karma kandiya, as well as kith and kin, and being obsessed with polluted consciousness, eventually arrived at that point not very much liked by those who were overly attached to material things. Purport In this verse, the words priya yojitam, yoshitam, and apriya are very significant. The word yoshit means woman and priya means dear or pleasing. Death is not very much welcome for those who are too much attached to material enjoyment, which culminates in sex. There is an instructive story in this connection. Once when a saintly person was passing on his way, he met a prince the son of a king, and he blessed him, saying, My dear prince, may you live forever. The sage next met a saintly person and said to him, You may either live or die. Eventually the sage met a brahmachari devotee and he blessed him, saying, My dear devotee, you may die immediately. <laughs> Finally the sage met a hunter and he blessed him, saying, neither live nor die. The point is that those who are very sensual and engaged in sense gratification do not wish to die. Generally, a prince has enough money to enjoy his senses. Therefore, the great sage said that he should live forever, for as long as he lived, he could enjoy life, but after his death, he would go to hell. Since the brahmachari devotee was leading a life of severe austerities and penances in order to be promoted back to Godhead, the sage said that he should die immediately so that he need not continue to labor hard and should inst could instead go back home, back to Godhead. A saintly person may either live or die, for during his life he is engaged in serving the Lord, and after his death he also serves the Lord. Thus, this life and the next are the same for a saintly devotee, for in both he serves the Lord. Since the hunter lives a very ghastly life due to killing animals, and since he will go to hell when he dies, he is advised 
to neither live nor die. Kim Puranjana finally arrived at the point of old age. In old age, the senses lose their strength. And although an old man desires to enjoy his senses, and especially sex life, he is very miserable because his instruments of enjoyment no longer function. <laughs> Krishna. Such sensualists are never prepared for death. They simply want to live on and on and extend their life by so-called scientific advancement. Some foolish Russian scientists also claim that they are going to make man immortal through scientific advancement. Under the leadership of such crazy fellows, civilization is going on. Cruel death, however, comes and takes all of them away despite their desire to live forever. This type of mentality was exhibited by Hiranyakashipu, but when the time was ripe, the Lord personally killed him within a second. Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. So that brings us to 748. Believe it or not, time flies when you're reading the Bhagavatam. Stand still, actually. And tomorrow night we'll start with text 13, stopping our reading tonight. Hare Krishna. And we'll humbly wait, patiently wait. <coughs> for the reflections of the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All right. First this evening is from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare, hmm. Kish- Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled sages. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada and Sri Mad Bhagavatam. Thank you, dear Maharaj, for your matchless gift to all of us. Hare Krishna. Just the mailman trying to carry the, carry the mail. And this is from Rati Manjari. Hare Krishna, Rati. Jai Guru Maharaj, please open the transcendental treasure chamber of wisdom and enrich us with the sacred sound. Hare Krishna. Don't mind if I do. Hare Krishna. By the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, who gets all the credit for this. <clears throat> and this is from Bhakti Maxine. Yes, Bhakti Maxine. Hare Krishna, dearest Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for reading the best books in the world. Mm. I would love to show my appreciation with the emojis as I normally do, but they all come up as angry faces. So in words, I love listening, hearing, and watching you read this wonderful knowledge. I am so grateful to Krishna that I need to search no longer. I love being in devotional service. If I didn't have Krishna, his pastimes, and all his wonderful devotees, I would in fact have nothing. Hare Bhai. Hare Krishna, thank you for that wonderful reflection and that personal realization. Um, there's nothing that makes us happier to know that reading Shiva Prabhupada's books has come alive to anyone and caused them to begin to see the reality for what it is. Thank you very much. Uh, so pleasing and so fulfilling. Hare Krishna. And from Paramohini Devidasi. Yes, Paramohini. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And from Ananda Murti. Yes, Ananda Murti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for today's reading of Sri the Prabhupada's Sriman Bhagavatam. Dear Guru Maharaj, it is nice to hear Bhagavad Gita 241 quote, Those who are on the spiritual path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute 
is many branched. Unquote. So Narada Muni is very intelligent so that he makes Prachina Barhishat understand not to kill the animals. So long story he told him. So I should learn from his way to speak. Also, there are a lot of things I learned from his allegorical story because one hand, Narada Muni told this story for all of us, the listeners of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you so much. Yesterday, one Bhagavad Gita distributed after duty. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna, Om Tat Sat. Thanks a lot for your example. Raising your child and working do, to do so and at every moment, lunchtime, after duty, distributing Prabhupada's books. Thank you very much. You're showing by example how it can be done from any position, pure Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. And from Maxine? Yes, yes, Bhakti Maxine. She says, thank you. My eyes have been peeled open. Try. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I thank you for your encouragement. This is from Rohini Nandana. Mohini Nandana. R- Rohini. Rohini Nandana, yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for the reading. The purports to verses 9 and 10 really struck me. Seeing my grandmothers coming to the last few years of their lives makes it very clear how they have done exactly what these verses talk about and as a result it becomes almost impossible to extricate them from material consciousness. It's also amazing how the whole cycle of human civilization is summed up as an expansion of overindulgence in sex. Mm. Jai Prabhupada, your servant. Yes, actually Srila Prabhupada told us if one can actually realize this principle, that sex life is the basic principle of material existence, uh, 50% 50% of your work is already done. You can understand this. Because if you do understand it, then you will naturally, voluntarily, willingly uh, want to stop indulging in sex. And then the gateway to real pleasure and real satisfaction opens. The gateway to having a peaceful heart and mind opens and one can think uh, and desire to go back to the spiritual world for eternal life and blissful knowledge thank you Hare Krishna from Subarao yes Subarao Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Srila Prabhupada thank you for your daily readings this Puranjana allegorical story and Prabhupada's purports are like bolts from blue for persons like me. Mm. If I were to read all by myself, it may not happen, first of all. And even I, even if I end up reading, I may not comprehend on my own. Thanks for your reading. It makes much more sense. Daily readings, key joy. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Yes, hearing is the basis. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna must have told Arjuna 30 times, just hear now, just just listen, just hear. I'm going to explain it again, I'll hear. I'll explain something more, now hear. 30 times. Because this is the process for advancing in spiritual knowledge and understanding and devotional service. Repeated hearing without cessation. It goes against the flow of everyone else in the world almost, or the vast majority of people. So it may not be so easy to come to that position, but once one has come to that position, then our eyes are open and we can see the difference between sense gratification 
and devotional service very clearly and we can choose devotional service, then we become actually peaceful, actually happy. Then we can help others. Unless we have this knowledge, we can't help others. This is why we want to advance in devotional life. Not for ourselves, but so that we can become instruments in the hands of Sri Krishna and in Srila Prabhupada. As we heard this verse, Vyabhasyatvika here, Eke Ha Kurinandana. In the material world, there are so many goals that the mind is always restless and running from one thing to another, to another, to another. But in spiritual life, there's only one goal to satisfy the senses of Krishna. Therefore, the mind is fixed, determined, and peaceful. Hare Krishna. Alright, this is from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for reading another episode of the bittersweet wisdom of King Puranjana. <laughs> Again, it was quite amazing. Sometimes I find it confusing and contrary, but if I am honest, I can understand the gist of it. Give up sense gratification and simply serve Krishna. Uh, this is a very important thing that you just said, Rati. Extremely important. Because from the very beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Vyasadeva explains that uh, the Bhagavatam is for those who are nirmatsaranam and satam. Nirmatsaranam means free from envy and satam means saintly or honest. Without being honest with oneself, without hearing, with, you know, without ulterior motive, it's impossible to enter into the Bhagavatam and taste the nectar of Krishna's association. But if we are honest, as the verse says, thoroughly honest, uh, and can distinguish reality from illusion, for the benefit of others, then we become everyone's friend. Then we can hear, then we can understand. So this is a very important point that you made. Thank you. Hare Krishna. More from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. If I may ask a question of a reading a few days ago, Srila Prabhupada wrote how a woman likes a man who is very expert at rape. Would you please explain how we should understand and especially explain that statement? I, I did this just to... You must not have been there. Uh, I explained this already. Uh, in, <coughs> in English, at the time Prabhupada used that word, it, rape did not mean what it means today. Uh, it means aggressiveness because in every species of life, generally speaking, the male is the pursuer of the female. You very seldom see females pursuing the males. It's the males who generally, by nature, pursue the females. And because both male and female are actually after puberty, not before puberty, but after puberty, they become sexually, easily sexually agitated, especially in the youthful t ages, you know, from, I don't know, 15 or 16 up until 30 or 40, or something like that. So it means that because both the men and women are looking for a sensual gratification for sex, they take pleasure in being wooed and in wooing. It is in material nature. It's built in.
This is not to be taken as some kind of, you know, put down to women or put down to anyone. It is meant to explain the facts of life, that sex life is the basis of material existence and it is the, it, the source of agitation and misery and disease and so many things. Mental problems, social problems, social ills. Everyone's thinking if they become free, then they become happy. But we're, by nature, we're not free. None of us, men, women, animals, whatever we are, whatever body we are, we are in, we're not free. We're strictly under the laws of material nature. Therefore, the whole aim of Vedic civilization is to reduce that temperature, reduce the heat that comes from sexual agitation. You know, it's in, in the material world now, it's, it's considered a very big you know, compliment to say, oh, I'm hot. You know, hot means I'm anxious, I'm ready for sex. Where is it? Where are you? Where are you? you know, this person is hot in this way or that way or another way which is just the opposite of being peaceful and happy. So if you take it like this, if you take the message of the Bhagavatam as a, as a lesson to how we can live a life with, 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 with everybody we have, male or female, or you know this nationality or that nationality, this religion or that religion, if we can become free of this activity, we become 50% more peaceful and able to hear about the truth of, of material existence and how it is not what it's cracked up to be. It's simply, simply temporary and agitating and uh, perpetu self-perpetuating. Birth after birth after birth. The goal of life is to stop the cycle of birth and death. Tato Brahma Jigyasa. Now is the time to inquire about the Absolute Truth. And this is the Absolute Truth, or a part of the Absolute Truth. So yes, women who are agitated and who are after sex, they usually become gratified by a male who is wooing or aggressive. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari says, Thank you. I see it more clearly now. It is meant as a descriptive statement of material nature, temporary, agitating, and self perpetuating. Wow. I will write those down. Thank you. Thank you. And from Subarao. Yes, Subarao. He says, thank you for opening our eyes by your daily readings. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. As usual, uh, I thank you all for your wonderful reflections and uh, the discussions uh, of the text, which is just exactly what Srila Prabhupada wanted us to do. And it was, it's what protects us and fixes us in the Absolute Truth. Thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samavira Bhakti Vrinda ki jai. Go pray manandi hari bo. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic as Paranjana is going to learn the real hard lessons of life. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow.